Not here, you're not anywhere. This is what we consider, for us, is actually a Super Bowl. Another place where people get to go fast where they normally don't. Now we got people coming from all over the world. Things happen here that just can't happen in your normal areas. <laughs> Never had an idea that, that it would grow to the size that it is. As far as I'm concerned or know, it's the largest machine gun shoot in the world. The way the family got their hands on what is now the range, Knob Creek, there was an auction. They had in the paper that they was going to auction off surplus land all the way around Fort Knox. We was able to win the auction, and uh, as far as I was concerned, I was very excited about it. In the beginning, Knob Creek gun range, there was just one building. It had wings on each side and a little observatory on top. It was used by the military to haul tanks in off of Fort Knox to shoot where the range is at today. <laughs> Around 65, we invited people down for a cookout and uh, shoot machine guns on Sunday afternoon after we got back from hunting and fishing or whatever we went out to do. The women took different covered dishes and the guys cooked squirrel and rabbit and deer. Back then, Dad and all of his friends, they all had automatic weapons, and we had the perfect place to shoot them. And the kids were just running around watching everybody shoot these fully automatic weapons. It was just strange, you know? It really wasn't called anything except for like a little bit machine gun picnic or something, you know? And the very first machine gun shoot, I think there was maybe three shooters there. I guess about three or four years after that, they started calling it the machine gun shoot. Well, the machine gun shoots were nice and people really liked it, but Dad I thought he'd add another twang to it. About 1970, maybe 72 or three, they didn't want to see a target or anything. They wanted to see something go bang. So he started getting dynamite, and we put dynamite on the targets, and the bullet impact would set it off. I knew the gentleman that run the dynamite shop, and uh, I could buy a case or two of dynamite from him. We used to stack tires up till there was 30 in a stack, and they would go off, and they would just shoot over the hill. Man, people just loved it. There's probably some tires still hanging in the trees up there. <laughs> I don't think at one point the machine gun shoot took off that great. It just growed and growed and growed. Probably 81 or 82, my dad asked me if I wanted to come and run the gun range. Kenny had been kind of hinting around that he was really interested. And I was like, well, you don't have anybody else in mind to do this? He said, no, and I said, well, okay, I'll give it a shot. When I turned it over to him, he just told me, Kenny Joe, you are the boss. You can make it or break it and um, I've been going at it ever since. Kenny just kept adding things to it, things that he thought would work, and, uh, and it just kept growing. And it got to a point where it was like, hey, we can probably charge people to come watch this. From that point on, then we started promoting the machine gun shoots. I guess in about 1985, some of the shooters that were at the machine gun shoot had approached me and said, you know, you could probably, you know, put a little gun show in with this and, you know, sell some vendor space. And I was like, well, I'll try that. Our first gun show 
I took six big blue tarps, the 20 by 30 tarps. And we wired them for electric so it'd have light inside so people could see the merchandise. And everybody was tripping over the ropes and stuff. And I had my first gun show, 40 tables, filled them all up. Today, we have, I don't know, two or 3,000 people come down to rent tables and sell merchandise. This is a place where you can find a whole bunch of stuff that you simply can't find anywhere else. As the machine gun shoot grew, and then we went to twice a year, then we had people that start wanting to come down, and Gunny was one of them. So where do machine gun maniacs like me go to play? Well, that's easy. Knob Creek Gun Range in West Point, Kentucky. Meet the guy in charge, Kenny Sumner. So Kenny, how you doing? Doing fine, thank you. They played that segment on his show, and it's just like, you know, our next couple of shoots were really, really big. You know, it's like, we gotta see this. We gotta come and see what's happening. Now we got people coming from all over the world. My name is Olaf, and I came all the way from the Netherlands to go to this event for machine shooting out. If you want to come down here, you definitely have to stay Saturday night for the night shoot. I'll have security on the left. Show me a lit green board when you're ready. I'll have security on the right. Show me a lit green board when you're ready. I'll tell you, when you come to a night shoot, there's nothing like it in it, even to this day, and I go out and I watch a night shoot, I mean the hair stands up on the back of my neck. When, that, when they start shooting, them tracers are going down range, it just lights you up. We have an average of 12,000 people for the weekend. We've had as many as 18,000. I'd like to see 20,000 down here one time just to see if they can fit, but uh, only if it's safe. Badass dad. No Slow out at little bits. I think that dad's very proud of Kenny and what he's done to turn this range into what it is today. It's the largest machine gun shoot in the world, and with that in mind, there's very little that you can't give Kenny confidence because he's the one that done it. I've poured my whole life into this place, and uh, I like to think that it means something to somebody. One of the things that I'm, I'm most impressed with, us as a family have all held together to keep this going. I just think it's, it's a forever thing. I would like to think that the grandchildren would be running it 20 years from now. And our kids are teaching their kids to handle firearms and the safety of it all and uh, to keep things free like they should be. This piece of property means a lot to me and my family and most of my friends. This is where I grew up. This is where I've done everything. To lose a place like this would, uh, it'd be terrible, which is why that's not gonna happen. And so we're gonna carry this legacy on. And uh, no matter how hard it is or what kind of shoes we gotta fill to do it, we're gonna make it happen.